Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Last week, I posted a video talking about a new feature that's found in Luminar 4. It's called AI Augmented Sky. Specifically, it's in Luminar 4.2. If you already own Luminar 4, Luminar 4.2 is a free upgrade. Make sure you're using the latest version of Luminar 4. If you have a Mac computer, go up to the top screen flow menu and down to check for updates. If you have a Windows computer, I believe that is under the help menu on the far right. If it isn't, if someone could tell me where it is on a Windows computer in the comments below, I would appreciate it. If you don't already own Luminar 4, in the description below the video, I'll have a link to their website. They have a fully working, fully free, 15-day working trial for you to try it out. I encourage you to do so. I also have a discount code you could use. I believe the discount currently is saving you $10 off the purchase or upgrade of Luminar 4. So check that out. Now, I mentioned last week I did this video on the AI Augmented Sky uh, filter that is now in Luminar 4, and I received a few questions, and I just want to kind of answer those in this video. It's going to be a relatively short video. I call these pro tips, even though it's really kind of simple. All right, first of all, I have this image here of the city of Columbus. The sun was setting to my left, and as you look at the buildings, if you look very closely, you could see like the left side of this building is brighter than over here. So quite obviously the sun is to my directly to my left. So I want to add a moon to the shot. So I'm going to go to the AI augmented sky filter. I'm going to go to object selection and I'll go down to moon two. Now it's going to plop it right in the middle. So we're going to have to move it. So I'm going to click on place object and then we'll move it over here to the left. But as you could see, uh, the light on the moon is coming from the wrong direction. If the sun is over to my left, that moon will be lit over on the left-hand side. And one thing I didn't mention in that video, and I should have, that you could actually flip these uh, horizontally and vertically. Now, there isn't like a button to do it. You have to drag it. So what we're going to do is let's just put it over just a little more. Just hover over one of the lines if you want to, uh, one of the vertical lines if you want to flip it horizontally and hover over one of the horizontal lines if you want to flip it vertically. So we'll go over this one, and you can see that the cursor turns into a double arrow. Just click with your left mouse button, hold the left mouse button in, and just drag it, and you can see how we're flipping it. Now, the bad thing is there really is no tool here to make sure that you're keeping it in proportion. Now, I, had, I suspect that Skylum software in a future update will make it so that you could flip these around proportionally without worrying about it. But as of now, there isn't. So you're going to have to kind of wing it when you do it. Now you can see, I think I have it a little bit too narrow. And one thing I found, um, I consider it a bug, and I'll, let's see if it does it. I'll go over this uh, left-hand vertical line and I want to drag it to the left. And when I do that, see how it's pulling in the right-hand side instead? I think that's a bug. It's, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, you could figure it out and just go the other way. Also, you could rotate it. If you come off one of the corners, you get this uh, curved arrow thing, and you could rotate this if you want. Now, of course, I'm messing around with a you know, heavenly body, and this isn't astronomically correct. Um, obviously. This is nothing I would ever do. I'm just doing this um, for educational purposes to teach you how you could flip objects around. Personally, I would never do it whether or not you want to. If you consider it part of your art, that's fine. That's great. It's just something I wouldn't uh, personally do, and I'm just trying to ask you not to judge me on it. So we have that there, and let's just say, we'll make it a little bigger, and let's just say we want to Square it off a little better. All right, so let's say we're done. Now, another question I received, and I actually mentioned this and I, I demoed it in my last video, but it was at the very end of the video, and I don't think some of you lasted all the way to the end. And that is, can you add something else, a second object, a second augmented sky thing to the sky? Well, you can, but you have to do it on its own layer. So we're going to click on place object there. So we have the moon there now. 
So what we need to do if we want to add something else, let's say I want to add fireworks. If I do it right now, it's just going to replace the moon with fireworks. We want to have the moon and fireworks. So to do that, we'll go up to the layers uh, panel, top right, click on the little plus sign. And what you need to do is create a new stamped layer. So click on that and what it will do, it's going to take the moon and it's going to take the city of Columbus image and it's going to stamp those together on their own layer. And you can see they're right here. Now we'll go back to the creative panel. We'll go back to augmented sky and I want to add fireworks and let's see what fireworks one looks like. And you can see it added it. Now we'll place object and we'll move fireworks maybe over here or something like that. Um, then click on place object again and you're done. So that's how you would add more than one object into the sky. Now the other question I received is what about like reflections if you have water? That's a little more difficult and you're a little limited with this. Now again, don't judge me on this because this is going to look absolutely horrid. I'm just doing it for educational purposes. The things I do for you. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the moon to this shot, but we can't use one of the built-in moons, meaning I can't use any of these objects, nothing. We have to use a custom image. So on my desktop, I have a photo of the moon. So we're gonna load a custom image and we're gonna click that full moon there that's on my desktop and click open. And it put it right here. See, it's a little low. So we're gonna click on place object and we're just gonna push it straight up a little bit, all right? And I want to make note of where it is. I want it just to the top of this tree. Uh, that looks pretty good for just eyeballing it. So let's just say that's all right. And then we're going to click on place object again. So we have the, our own moon now. This isn't a moon that was in the drop down. This is one I had on my desktop placed on the, on the uh, oh, image or in the image in the scene. Now I need to make a mirror image of it down here in the water. So what I need to do is go back up to the layers. This time, click on the plus sign, but this time we're going to add a new image layer. And it's asking me where that image is. Of course, it's the moon. So we're going to click open. And you're going to see what happens here is that automatically uh, Luminar stretches it out to fit the original um, proportions of the image I had up already. So it stretched the moon out. It looks horrible, right? Don't worry about that yet. We'll fix it. So we're going to go to the blend mode first and we're going to go down to either lighten or screen. Uh, well, sometimes one works better than the other and we could switch it later if we need to, but let's go to screen. Now we need to fix that moon. So it's not uh, like an egg. All right. So we're going to click on layer transform. And what we'll do is over here on the left, you could see how it has the width of 3000 and a height of 2002. All I'll need to do is just make that equal. So we'll go to this 3000 and just make it 2002, hit the tab key, and now we have a round moon again. Now what we need to do is we need the mirror image of this because uh, obviously the this top part of the moon in the original image will be at the bottom part as the reflection. So what you need to do is go to this little icon right here and that will flip it vertically. Now, just drag it down so that it's about in the same spot. Now, at, at the top, I made sure that the moon here was just eyeballing it around the top of this tree, you know, basically. So down in the reflection of that tree, we'll try to do the same thing. We'll try to just pull it straight down and make it about like that. Okay, so far so good. Now we'll click Done. All right, now what we need to do is we really only want that moon on the water, not on the trees, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the mask. So click on Edit Mask, click on the brush, and what we want to do is paint in the adjust, adjustment. And uh, we could keep softness at 100, opacity at 100, and then go down. If I get my brush disappeared, there it is, and go right here. All right, so now it just removed the moon from everywhere, but we know where we want it, right? So we're going to paint it in right here. And we're going to try to carefully not go on the trees like I just did. Like that. And like that. So we can come in here. Like that. And like that. 
All right, now we could paint out the adjustment or click on the erase part. And then if I screwed up a little bit on the trees, we could come in and fix it. Now it's way too bright compared to the moon that's up in the sky. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the opacity slider here on the right and we'll just pull that way down. All right, now I mentioned that this was gonna look absolutely horrid. I'm not, this isn't something I'm gonna share with the world. As a matter of fact, I'm not even gonna save this, but I just wanted to show you what you would do uh, when you're dealing with a reflection. The main thing is you can't use any of the built-in objects that come in the AI augmented sky filter. You have to use your own object. And that's the way you go about doing it. So I just wanted to clear up those three things. I received multiple questions on each of those three topics. Hopefully that helps you better utilize this new filter that's in Luminar 4.2. Again, in the description below the video, I'll have a link to their website. Check it out and be sure to use my discount code when you purchase it to save yourself a few dollars. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>